this. But anyway, so welcome to ICT 4014. We have to start again, right? Uh, project in Information and Communication Technologies, right? Uh, so uh, off the bat here, you'll notice that I'm tagging these like sessions we're going to be having as briefings, right? They're going to be ad hoc. They're not lectures. It's pointless for us to have lectures. But what we are going to do is um, a week before a major milestone, um, we'll have like a briefing so that you know what is expected of you. Uh, actually, so that we give you an opportunity to ask questions, if you have questions, in regards to the task at hand. And again, I talk more about the series of milestones that you're going to be working towards, right? Between now and uh, November, maybe December or something. My name is Light on Theory. Thank you. <laughs> um, so just a, an outline of what we are going to look at here. I think we should be done before eight or by eight, I guess. Uh, just start by giving a bit of context and then talking just a bit more about these so-called milestones, right, and deliverables. So, so 4014 is a combination of what you've been doing from first year, right? There's a reason it's called a capstone project because the things that you find yourselves doing will involve various concepts from these different courses. For some of you, if, if you end up working with a supervisor that will insist that you work on a computer security centric problem, uh, it's likely that you're going to make use of like uh, concepts, right? Introduced to you in computer security or something. Um, those of you that are going to be developing software or something, it's, it's highly likely that uh, you'll make extensive use of 2010 and 3020, right? And, and the reason I'm saying those of you is it's possible that you work with a supervisor that will insist that you, you undertake a project that's going to be purely experimental in nature, right? We had maybe one or two, I think one project where there was no development whatsoever. You know, so students were merely interested in just trying to take stock of uh, the state of like computer labs in, in, in schools, right? Uh, public schools or something, public high schools. Uh, it's likely there's going to be one or two groups this year again, uh, but that's fine. But in respect of what you do, what you realize is that uh, the ideas from uh, this course here are going to be tremendously useful. And I think I mentioned this when we were discussing 3020, right? So those, 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 uh, those things we talked about in 3020 still apply. Um, and I don't know if I told you this, but what you're doing in 4014 is more or less like uh, uh, what you, this, the, the toy projects you're working towards in 3020, but on a much larger scale. Because at this stage, we know that uh, you have all the knowledge you need for you to execute such a project, right? An ICT or an IT-centric project. Whether you'll be required to write software or something, it should be trivial for you right now. But please don't uh, underestimate this, right? Um, and on that note, right, so there are two prerequisite courses for this course. You can't do this course if you haven't uh, passed this course. Um, I don't think you're allowed to do this course if you haven't passed 3020 as well. Um, but anyways, and uh, anyway, I, I want to wish you luck this year, right? Please work hard so that taxpayers such as myself stop funding your stay here. I don't know if they continue funding you uh, if you like if you fail a course. I think they do, right? Yeah. No, it's serious. I mean, you're laughing. It's serious. I mean, money should be put to good use here, right? We are, we are on a tight budget as a country. No, seriously. So, so if, if we are finding people that are incapable, right, of seeing things through, then it's pointless. You know, you know, you know, you know that, right? Yeah. And you'll start feeling the pain very soon when you start paying payee, right? After next year, it's starting. You'll be there complaining, no, but my salary, the government gets a lot of money or something. So, but the, the, the objectives of this course is simple, right? Uh, at the end of the course, um, the expectation is... Uh, you produce a high quality project proposal and ideally the way this course is carved out is you work on the proposal in the first term and then you finalize the project in the second term or the second semester, right? So once you're done with this course, you'd have uh, produced a high quality research proposal. Ah. Um, most of you would have comprehensively designed and you know, implemented and uh, evaluated a software artifact, right? Not, not a prototype this time around. This is like a full-fledged artifact. Hopefully something that will be able to deploy. And uh, when I talk about resources, I will share links to previous projects. There are some students that did a tremendous uh, job, right? 
their tools are actually deployed publicly. They're still, I mean, accessible right now. I think they're going to be immortalized or something. Um, we expect you to, using the principles from ICT 2034, we expect you to comprehensively, you know, uh, collect data and analyze the data, right? Be able to draw conclusions based on the findings that are going to come out of your research. Um, everything feeds into what you're doing towards the end, which is the, the final project report, the research project report. Usually this is like a 20, maybe 40 to 50 page, maybe more actually, uh, document. Um, and then you'll be expected to disseminate your research findings. Now the dissemination is primarily done using a so-called OR exam that, that we do towards the end. This is one of the very last milestones. Uh, last year we had hoped that we would have some sort of open evening event because uh, that was the very first cohort for this program. But because of you know, COVID-19, that did not happen. We are hoping this year uh, we can do that. It's for your own good because what we plan to do is to invite people from industry to come and see the projects that you'll be working on, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, it's going to be an opportunity for you to maybe network, right? This is how people find jobs also these days when jobs are hard. If you don't want the default job, like what Lighton does, which is good, by the way. I like it myself. I like teaching. <laughs> no, seriously, I do. I love teaching. Um, yeah, so you've expected dis disseminate research findings. Again, I think some of the links that I provide uh, when I talk about resources are links to um, the virtual presentations that were given by students, right? So if you need to have access to those, um, I mean, you can gain access to them. Um, <coughs> all right, so in terms of the activities in the course, um, like I said initially, we'll, no lectures in this course, but we'll have uh, ad hoc, right, uh, briefings. Um, ad hoc because it's not like these briefings are going to be weekly, right? So we'll have one, we'll probably have another one maybe uh, next week because uh, you're supposed to start working on the proposal, right? And then after that, it's going to take a while before we have another briefing. Maybe three, maybe four weeks later or something, we'll have a briefing to talk about um, our expectation during the proposal presentations. Uh, yeah. But the other, some of the, the other key activities, like the regular supervision meetings that we expect you will have with your supervisors. So after you uh, self-organize into groups, you'll be assigned a project supervisor, right? A guide or something, a mentor, if you will. Uh, in some instances, the supervisor will dictate the project that you should work on. So they will provide you with a specification of the problem that you're going to work on. Um, some supervisors prefer that you come up with your own projects, right? So you're going to have to look for a project, something that makes sense as a group, um, and then you obviously you submit, you, you, talk, you talk to your supervisor about it, and then maybe they'll accept the project or something, or refine it further, help you refine it further. Um, but the, the key thing here is that, uh, is that uh, you want to, to ensure that you organize regular meetings. Now I'm saying you want to ensure because some supervisors will insist that you meet them regularly, but some, some supervisors will expect that you initiate contact. So, so they expect that you reach out to them if you want to meet them. You know, some supervisors probably won't meet you at all, but you're supposed to meet or something. You know, course correction is very important. Be, because these are people that have done this on a large scale. So uh, like when you're scoping the problem, they'll be able to tell you to say, this is too much, right? This is something that you cannot do uh, as part of a capstone project report because it's too involving, for instance. You know, uh, this is too complex because uh, you spend a lot of time learning a new technology and people don't listen, right? When we had the proposal presentations, you're telling people, you can't be saying you're going to use MATLAB or all these fancy things. Yes, fancy is good. And I know people get excited at this stage, right? We to use this new technology. You won't manage to do this, right? It's hard, right? No, we want to do it. Okay, fine, because you're not forced, right? And then midway through, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a thing, there's a, there's a group, right? Midway through the uh, process, no, we want to change the topic. You know, some, sometimes it's important to step back and think about why someone is suggesting you to do something. We want you to graduate. We want you to succeed, right? Because most of you, like it or not, will probably end up getting jobs because of the projects that you're going to do in 4014. Otherwise, what are you going to tell them you've done in the past, right? 
or maybe some of you have probably done things you point at like some things you've done but the vast majority of you will use this as a basis and like it or not most people right if, if you are being interviewed for these conventional jobs maybe not, uh, not if, you, if you are being hired by the government there will be no interview session of this sort but they'll ask you what did you do as part of the capstone project right yeah, so you want to be able to, to, to really uh, make an impression and hope to get the job or something but, uh, but please the supervision part is very important and the, the sooner you get into this routine with your supervisors the better you don't want to leave this for later uh, bad things happen uh, you end up presenting things that are, I, I think you those of you that attended the presentations actually noticed right you were there si sitting there listening to fourth years presenting and you're thinking oh but this person is not making sense what they are presenting is wrong right you know why? In part because they were not attending meetings with their supervisors. And they won't force you, right? The supervisor won't force you or call you, right? Well, I know I won't. I don't know if the others call though, but, <laughs> but the expectation is if you form groups of four, right, people, surely there should be some of them that would be, you know, diligent enough to make sure that uh, the project is on course or something. Um, so we plan to also have a uh, the departmental meetings that we normally have, right? We'll be extending invitations to you. I do encourage you to attend these sessions because it, it turns out that there are some ideas that are discussed in these sessions that will prove to be valuable to you as you are working on the project, right? Because these are like uh, research-centric seminars. So please be on the lookout. If you see an email, you know, there's this seminar. Just sometimes, just, uh, especially these days that most of these you know, seminars and, and workshops are virtual, just log in for the first five minutes, maybe ten minutes, and find out what the thing is about, right? Never know. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I tried to tell last year's group, there's a course I teach, right? The vast majority of people in that course are people in industry, right? And I'm, I'm telling these people, there's a reason I'm inviting, and these are people I was uh, working with and supervising. This is how you network. When you're asking smart questions in that group, those people that are already in industry will try and find out who you are, right? They're usually projects that take place, right? Where is that student, you know? But uh, that's fine. So the assessment is uh, broken up into uh, two distinct components, right? So there are marks um, uh, associated with the proposal component and then marks associated with the final, uh, the final report. So uh, you'll be given marks on the proposal document and uh, after you do your proposal presentation and then when you submit your final report and when you do your oral exam, right, when you present the final project, the, the, the findings of the research towards the end. Uh, but it turns out that uh, there are some other key activities or milestones as we call them that are, they sort of like feed into the final report and we sometimes extract marks from there. You know, so for instance, you won't be able to write you know, a report that makes sense if you don't write good software, right? You know, if you don't follow those uh, um, software, uh, so software engineering principles that we discussed in 3020, for instance, you know, um, how to write good software, you know, and people don't listen. Last year, if you were to take stock of how many people actually produced a, an SRS document before writing software, you'd be shocked, right? I, I, I don't understand. People just don't want to listen, but that's fine. Um, so again, these, these assessments here are going to be broken up into what we are calling milestones. And just to give you a sneak preview, so there's a milestone uh, draft document that has been shared on the Moodle. Um, and I think the email also has a direct link to the milestone document. What you probably want to pay particular attention to is uh, who is responsible for each milestone. And um, action here should be students actually. And then this is supervisor, I'll change this. And then you also want to pay particular attention to the due date, right? That way as a group, once you form groups, you do what we prescribe in 3020, right? You sit down and then you come up with a timeline, you plan, when are we going to do this? How do we break up, um, how do we break up uh, item number five, for instance? You know, between now and uh, April 15th or something. Don't wait until you know, the, the week before April 15th for you to start working on this. You can start right now. You know, and it doesn't necessarily mean that just because the current active milestone is milestone number one, then you should just be working on milestone number one. No. Once you form a group, 
you can already start brainstorming, thinking about ideas, project ideas, just in case the supervisor who's going to be assigned to you will tell you to look for a project, to propose a project uh, topic, right? You know? But anyway, um, so you, you should be able to gain access to this document. Yes, sir? No, you are, so that's what, that's what I was saying, this is a fact of, you are assigned. Yes, you are, <laughs> I think we should do a lot or something. They banned gambling in Zambia, apparently. Kids are gambling a lot. They were showing those gambling machines in. You saw that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Sad, right? I wonder if there are people, there are people that are trained to do that at UNSA, right? I don't know where they are, right? Is it psychology or something? What is that? Things to do with addiction and when addiction and all that. Yeah, the people that use ball bit, I know you are here, but <laughs> they've, they've taught you probability, right? In 20, it's a sign, I guess, that you were not paying attention in 2034, right? Probability. Very sad, but that's fine. I'm not saying don't do ball up bit, you don't quote me, but I don't do that. I wouldn't do that if I were. <laughs> but hey, go ahead. <laughs> and do it if you want to. <laughs> uh, so this document, um, I guess maybe I could, I don't know if I can show you this thing here, but uh, this document is actually, it's live, it's available, you can access it. I do encourage you to look at, look at this as you are forming groups, right? Um, as you are forming groups, you probably want to, to look at this, I guess, I don't know. Focus this thing. Yeah, so this is the document I was talking about. I, I think it presently has uh, uh, a total of um, what 25 items, right? So there, there are some, uh, and, and, and here's the thing. So there are some things that appear here that won't really be carved out as assignments or assessments, but there are things that are associated with deliverables, right? There are things that are um, supposed to be worked on by the group. There are also individual tasks. Like the, the very first assignment or milestone, for instance, is an individual task, right? You don't need a group for you to select a group because you don't have a group yet. Um, so things like the reflection paper that you submit towards the end is an individual activity also. But, yeah. That's okay. All right. Oh, I, I had it here actually, which is a good thing. Um, so the very first uh, 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 milestone, I, th I thought I would actually include this here because it's due on Friday. Your task is simple, right? Just go to this spreadsheet. You'll find the link in the email sent to you. And once you form a group, you speak to colleagues. Uh, once you form a group, let's say you choose uh, as, uh, 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 if, let's say there's four people that have decided to form a group you decide on the group number right and you decide on the group number by just uh, going to the spreadsheet itself and um, and uh, adding your computer numbers there right so this thing here so if you decide to say we're going to be group project team one the number is I mean it's just like an identifier for the group right you could choose 16 if you want to no one cares so but if you choose one what you do is you go here and just, just, the only fields that you should feed in is, as an individual, just your computer number. That's all. Nothing else, right? Just your computer number here. And then maybe one of you, like uh, the, 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 de facto, the de facto is a project manager can indicate like just an optional comment if you think there's something that you want to convey to us or something. So just, just go in here, um, uh, indicate your computer numbers. Uh, four individuals per group this time around. Sorry? Probably we might scale it down to three maybe, but four. Why? Sorry? Why? The question is always why not, not why, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, didn't they teach you in 2034, you falsify things. That's what Dr. Kandera taught you, right? Yeah. But, but, but the reason is simple. I mean, it's uh, five is just too much. Yeah, but but the, but the, yeah, but because you are doing things for the first time. You know what project management is all about now. You know how to work as part of the larger team. 
you know, you should go elsewhere, like engineering and uh, uh, computer science. These people work on these projects on, like as individuals, right? You don't work on them in groups. I don't know where this thing is coming from in this department. I think we should it's change this. Sorry? Yeah, but there's so many things at play here, right? There's, there's things that you're, you're doing in 4014. You're trying to prove something here that you have learned and that you understand. You don't, in an ideal case, yes, you will not write software as an individual, but you can. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> and you know this, you can. <laughs> We were saying in industry, you never find people writing, like if you are working on a large project, that's what they, I, and I, I hope you were not quoting me on this, you know how people go to an, a recording and just splice out that small part, say this is what our lecturer told us, no, 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 <laughs> yeah, misrepresenting what I said, right? <laughs> I said when you're working, when you're out there in industry, you rarely, I think I introduced the Zema project, right? that thing has gone over time, by the way, we've gone beyond the deadline, it's quite sad, but we're almost there. It's a large team, right? We have how many developers? Six developers. Two senior developers and four junior developers, right? You know, so that gives you an idea of what I was saying. So when you're working on, on th those sort of projects, you don't work alone, right? People play different roles. But yeah, but you can work, but also, this is, you're not writing software. This is a research project. And make no mistake, this is a research project. A software is just a means to an end, right? You are going to be exploring a problem, and as part of that exploration process, you need to develop an artifact. You remember what we discussed about how you evaluate an artifact in isolation and with users as well, right? Yeah. You know, so it's, it's not like the goal is for you to write, so which is why I said, I think from the outset, that uh, there are some of you that will likely work on projects that won't involve any sort of development. You know? But uh, anyway. Some of you might, might work on, on, on problems that will just uh, involve extensive data collection and analysis, right? You know? Right, I, th I thought I'd spend a, a bit of time talking about muscle number one. Please, this is due on Friday, make sure you do that. You can do this today, actually. If I were here, I'd do this today. Um, but of course, you know, people never listen, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, as part of muscle number two, the coordinator, myself, just truly, uh, in, 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 in collaboration with uh, the, the other colleagues in the department, so Dr. Walia, Mr. Mbewe, Mr. Mwalimu, and Mrs. Mwila, um, will assign groups, right? Uh, we'll assign people to groups. Uh, I think we'll randomize it. To some, we'll, we'll assign groups to supervise. We'll assign supervisors to groups. Um, no. No, because there's usually a bias, right? Um, so s lecturers will tend to, uh, and it's human nature, I guess. Lecturers would, would prefer, uh, if, you were to, if you were to me, I would prefer to work with uh, students that I know are serious and students that are high performers, right? But, in an ideal case, but what we are doing here is, it's much more than just, we're not just doing this, right? We are trying to teach you so that you learn how to, some of you people are going to be doing this in your workplaces, right? So the goal is to make sure that you learn and you understand. Of course, some of us have vested interest, like uh, I've worked with students in the past where we've uh, produced publications from the stuff that they have done, right? Th that is one of the things that I'm interested in. And it turns out that usually, you're able to do that if you work with serious students. You know? And serious doesn't mean like somebody who's been getting A's, A's, doesn't work like that. And you see this in real life, right? Uh, so, serious means maybe someone who is able to persevere or something, you know? Um, but yeah, so this is randomized. We look at, uh, we look at the group composition, we look at uh, um, the capability of the students that comprise that group, and then we distribute the uh, teams amongst ourselves um, fairly. And by fairly, uh, I would probably work with uh, a diverse set of groups. It's unfortunate that some, some groups will comprise of maybe uh, individuals that maybe will find it hard to program, for instance, right? For whatever reason. 
um, which is unfortunate. But, but, but because we have a year, I think it's okay because you will learn, I think. You will learn. But yeah, so this is, um, this is done in a fair manner. <laughs> fair and transparent manner, actually. <laughs> no, it's true. You, all you have to do is this document, actually, I can share it from last year. And if you know the fourth year, just look at the group composition and look at who was supervising them, right? And this is a bit misleading because I think the first two groups did really, really nice work, right? But uh, I, I, I also worked with students that struggled and I think part of the reason why they struggled is because in one group, all of them were, were either repeating 30-20 or did not do 30-20 and so were doing it then, you know? Uh, and so you had this group which was clueless right in regards to 3020 like what you're supposed to do when you're executing a project like this but that's fine so you'll be allocated a supervisor and so this milestone when the email comes through you notice that we explicitly insist that you immediately contact or initiate communication with your supervisor when you're assigned a supervisor don't think that the supervisor will contact you what you should do is you send an email right to organize maybe a face-to-face -face meeting say we've been you've been assigned as our 4014 supervisor, can we have a meeting with you this week or something? The sooner you do that, the better, because that meeting will set the stage for what happens next, right? Is the supervisor going to propose a topic and they're going to make you look for a topic, for instance? You know? Um, and then, as, as part of muscle number three, you, you're expected to, again, in your, in your team, maybe assign roles if you want to. So the rules in 3020 don't apply here. You remember in 3020 where we said we expected you to contribute equally here? If you want as a group, you can identify people that you want to focus on the programming part, on the documentation part, but you know how to, uh, I guess, assign roles, right? So you should be able to do this from 3020. Um, the literature synthesis document is not necessarily going to be graded. It's there to help you explore the problem. Um, and in fact, it sets the stage for milestone number five, which is the research proposal. Because in the research proposal, there's meant to be a, 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 a related work section and the thinking is that all you do is you just summarize the literature synthesis document and then just feed it into the, into the research proposal document. Um, and then after that, um, you do your research proposal presentation. This is the marks allocated to this is graded. I'll show you uh, the, the distribution of marks just now. Um, and then at some stage, I think before end of, uh, is it before end of this semester term, you're expected to revise the proposal document. Because when it's graded, you receive feedback. When, when you do these uh, uh, oral presentations, you get feedback from all the members of staff. And so you incorporate the feedback and suggested changes into the revised uh, proposal document. Right? And this is important because uh, this will signal whether or not you'll be doing the right thing going forward. Right? Um, as a way of... Uh, documenting what you're doing or disseminating this information, you'll be expected to set up a so-called project website. Um, if you go to this link here, uh, you, should, you should have access to a sample of uh, Project Team 1, the Project Team 1 website. I think most of the websites actually have, uh, the project websites actually have links to proposal documents, you know, links to uh, presentations that were, were done. For some of them, even links to GitHub repositories. So, um, it would be wise for you as a, once you form your groups, maybe just look at uh, one or two projects. If you attended the presentations, I'm sure there are some projects that, that impressed you, right? Go there and just look at the, the deliverables and see if you can learn from them. Um, so if you use this link, you can just replace one with two, three, four, all the way up to 16, and then you have access to all the... And I think I talk about this during... Uh, the, oh, we're talking about resources. The final reports that were submitted by the students are uh, made available on our, on our document archive, our departmental document archive. So um, just go to list.unza.jm slash archive and then go to the collection. Um, go to the uh, ICT 4014 collection, right? So if you go here. I don't know if I'm connected. Um, I mean, you can also search, but what you want to do is you want to go to undergraduate project reports, and then you go to Capstone project reports, and then further drill down to ICT 4014, and then you have access to all the, um, all the 14 projects from last year. Right? Uh, it would be nice to just skim through some of them, or all of them, 
Um, you can actually compare things like quality, you know, which document was properly prepared or something. You notice that some of them, uh, I don't know. This is, uh, and it's quite sad because uh, this information is publicly accessible, right? And this is a point I was stressing for those of you that attended the 4014 presentations. I was telling people that, you see, when people access the things you've done, right? And you've written the wrong things. They won't blame the student, right? You'll be long gone by then, hopefully. But what they'll do is, they'll look at the department. You know? You're producing substandard work as a department. But we have to put them out there, right? It's a way of showcasing to the world, I guess, what we are doing. Hey, the, by the way, right? Research is research. Uh, this thing also has uh, projects from uh, LIS, uh, LIS 4014. I do encourage you to look at There are some projects, actually. There are students that I've worked with in the past that have worked on problems that... Uh, I think they're bought on like, uh, information systems and information technology or something. You know? Um, so you, you might, you, th there's, always, there's, some, there's always something to learn. So probably want to look at these reports as well. Also, if you go to the UNSA website, I don't know if those of you that uh, are aware about this, if you go to the UNSA website, right, you will notice that um, there are, although UNSA stopped doing this because of quality issues, right, but there are past student reports. If you go to the, this collection here, student project or research reports, right, there are past reports from certain departments that you might want to look at, especially the Department of Computer Science and maybe Engineering, right? So you might want to go to maybe Natural Sciences and then hopefully you'll be able to find like a uh, CS-related uh, project and maybe you can, you can maybe uh, pick up uh, some, some nice ideas from there, right? So besides, I'm just saying that besides what I've indicated in the slides, there's also the the UNSA Institutional Repository, which has uh, a collection um, called uh, Student Reports or something, Project Slash Reports. Um, another key deliverable, right, this is tagged as uh, milestone 20, is the source code, right? So if you're going to be writing software, you'll be expected to demo the software, to make it publicly accessible, and also to uh, provide us with a direct link to uh, a GitHub repository, in addition to submitting a zipped file with your source code, right, the final version of your source code. And you saw this, those of you that attended those presentations, right? The questions, it wasn't me, it was my other colleagues. Show us the demo, what did you do, right? And people were there coming up with stories. No, right now I'm using my phone. Really? Send us the link, right? <laughs> you did, the reason you're doing that is because you, you probably, you didn't do the work, right? No, you, I, I think both of you had attended those, and this is serious, right? So that oral exam, those questions that are being asked, right? The oral exam is broken up into different sub-components. So they are marks allocated to the Q&A session. If you fail to answer questions, if you fail to do something that uh, an examiner requires you to do, then you lose marks, right? You know, there are some people that even mi missed the oral exam. <laughs> Where are your colleagues? No, my colleagues have internet issues. Really? This is an exam, right? But that's okay. All right. Uh, just quickly about grading. Uh, the split is as follows. It's a 40-60 split. So the first, and some people prefer to view this as like 40% being CA, like the proposal is CA, and then the 60% is the final exam. But I like to think as ev everything is being an exam, right? And this is something that you should get used to because there are usually some people that will tend to sacrifice this. No, I'm, I'm studying for this other course. That's why I haven't been, that's why we haven't, we're studying for this other exam, that's why we haven't been working on the project. Do you not understand that what you're doing is part of the exam, right? You're being examined in this course as well, you know? So th th there needs to be a shift in mindset really, uh, to, to be honest. So. Um, this 40% for the research proposal is distributed as far as the 30-10 split here, so 30% is allocated to the uh, proposal document and then 10% uh, to the proposal presentation. Uh, hi, how are you? Yeah. Must, maybe, right? It's not a familiar face. Sorry? Sorry? Yeah, I don't think there's a class. Oh, you can join us if you want to. Maybe it's lost. It might be lost. <laughs> 
it's not, there's always something to learn. I used to attend classes myself when I was a student. I would just randomly go to some lecture. True story. Yes. You learn like this, right? I go to vet sometimes to go and listen to what people do there. This is how you learn. So especially when you work, when you work in a discipline that um, transcends these different domains, right? If, if you're doing an IT course, or a, a CS course, you will find yourself working with people from different backgrounds. I know people want to go here, but we almost, but you can go in with just a grading here. <laughs> so there's a 30-10 split for the research proposal, and then a 50-10 split for the final report. So 50% is for the report, 10% is for the oral exam. Um, again, all of these milestones, like the assignments that are going to be uh, um, sent your way via the Moodle, they will have explicit instructions, uh, including a breakdown of the marks. So for the proposal, who, for instance, right, if you look at this as an example of the proposal, it will show you to say the proposal, this 30%, and take this piece out of the 100, right? So we're saying 70% goes to quality, and then 20% project management, and then 10% goes to style and formatting. And then we further break down the same thing we're doing in 30-20. So it's not like we just mark the 30% the just by reading the document. We look at all these different aspects of the document, right? The same goes for the presentation. We look at your response to, uh, to questions that are being asked of you, uh, whether the presentation is comprehensive enough, if it includes all the key aspects of the proposal itself, right? Summarized. Um, I think this hasn't changed. So the range associated with the different grades still hold. Uh, I think it's sad that UNSA still uses, or at least our school still uses 45 as a past threshold, right? Have you not come across these other um, courses you find online where the, the pass mark is like 70 or something? Yeah. Yeah. You get below that, it's a fail. Well, it's a D, D plus or something. But that's fine. I, I thought I would include this just to remind you um, the things that I think are relevant when you're undertaking a research project that is more inclined towards uh, information technology or computing, um, you probably want to look at these resources. Um, of course, you can use this uh, together with what was conveyed to you by Dr. Kandel in 2034, right? So you want to go back and look at what, what the prescribed books were there. You still find them useful. Uh, and most of these, actually, if you've noticed, are actually picked from 3020. Um, for project management, my advice to you, use tools that people are familiar with, maybe tools that were used in 3020, right? Especially if you form the same group from 3020, for instance. Um, in terms of software development frameworks, uh, this is one of the reasons why you assigned a supervisor. Your supervisor might suggest that you use a particular framework or language. Um, keep an open mind. Uh, sometimes, it, uh, at, uh, it may become, it might actually become necessary for you to learn a completely different language as a group. Something that's easier, something that has uh, a lot of reusable components, for instance. Right? But, but you're lucky because, uh, I mean, there's PHP, there's... Sorry? Or oh, PHP, Python, uh, these are easy to learn languages. JavaScript, there's a lot of resources online. But, but again, you want to sit down as a group, and uh, it will also depend on the, on the, um, the problem. So the, one of the groups I was working with, right, had to learn how to use Python uh, from scratch because of the nature of the project, right? They couldn't use any other language. But it's, uh, they had fun, right? You know? Um, and their workarounds, most of these supervisors will probably invite you to, to attend uh, postgraduate courses where some of these things are taught, right? Uh, like the concepts you need for you to work through the project or something. All resources, everything is going to take place via the Moodle, but communication will be done via the mailing list. Um, the course resources, um, I have direct links in this slide deck. I will share the slide deck. Um, there's a departmental uh, document archive which has uh, passed Capstone project reports for all the programs in the department. You want to spend time here, you can search for keywords, maybe just search ICT or something. Um, you'd be surprised. And some of you will find this useful because as part of your literature synthesis or when you're coming up with your related work section, you want to link to work that has been done locally, right, in Zambia uh, or at UNS or something. 
Um, so you should be able to find uh, you know, work like this, for instance. Um, I mentioned the website. Again, I'm repeating it here. Direct link, just change the number here, 1, 2, 3, up to 16. You have access to all the websites. Uh, most of these websites will have direct links to uh, tools that were developed. Uh, so this is an example of, uh, I mean, the user interface here. I mean, obviously you did a bit of work, but, you know, I don't know. I mean, look at the icons, the books, but I guess, but it's, it's available online, you know, and you can use it. Um, but this was good. I thought this was really good, but I was working with this group. Not that I'm shooting on this group. They did uh, excellent work. I won't lie, right? Um, they did really great work, actually. Sorry? I have told them. Uh, I'm recording this. I'll upload it. I'll link it to them and tell them you should hear that. I, I was, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. It was Elijah, Victor, Sharon, uh, Royce, and, and Trey, right? Sorry? Yeah, it was great work. And I can even, uh, sometimes in a lecture, I would say, I, I supervise them well, but no, I won't take the credit, they were just good students, right? For the most part, they were able to follow through with the, with the instruction, the direction, right? And we had regular meetings, I mean, there were some people that would come up with stories, no, I can't attained because of ABCD. And you notice a pattern, right? Someone starts perpetually coming up with excuses and you know there's a problem here, but you'll find people like that everywhere in life, right? Some of my relatives are like that also. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, again, you have links to uh, repositories for whatever reason if you want to access them, right? I, I want to, to remind you, right? Stay away from this, right? Um, Who's has acquired Trinity? And I'm saying stay away from this because in 3020 there were people that were plagiarizing content. Right? And I think those that were plagiarizing content, no, because they got zeros like in the test. I don't put things in the open, but they got zeros, right? Because, and I sent them emails to tell them that you got zeros. Fortunately for some of these people, these are people that, uh, and it's shocking, these are people that are good students, so they were able to pass nonetheless, but they've gotten a better mark, right? You are copying things, right? You go there. How do you go to Wikipedia? You copy. You just, how do you go? You Google something, <laughs> and then you, <laughs> you, you copy that and you paste it in a document. Who does that, right? And you know you are cheating, right? Why? If you know you are doing the wrong thing, why are you doing it in the first place? You know? Come in, please join us. We've already started. Um, so again, course management, we're done using the Moodle. Um, we're almost gone. And, uh, <laughs> and so the course meaning, please, if you are not receiving emails from ICT4014 at user.zm, do let me know, and then I'll add you to the, to the list, right? Yeah, this is a reminder, because, uh, uh, oh, this is one of I was surprised the other day, I came here and there was no one, right? The apathy from fourth year. I said, seriously, I waited here and I was asking the kind ladies that help us clean the, the places. Is, were there, are there any students in the finance? I know there have not been any students, right? Why? On the 14th of what? No, that's not true. No, that's <laughs> 14th of February, I think. Yeah. You can't start classes on the 14th. No, but oh, we are, we are done. Sorry. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. What's like? It's here. Yeah, it's a venue. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Can summarize? Okay, thanks. Yeah, so just, uh, I'll share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's being impolite, but he was kind enough to allow us. I'm, I'm just summarizing here. Just to emphasize that my role is a coordinator, course coordinator. I'm working in conjunction to these people. I forgot Ms. Mwina or Adha here. Um, if you need to reach out to me for whatever reason, and this is important, if there's a problem, if you're experiencing problems with a supervisor and you, you don't feel comfortable talking to the supervisor, you can come and see me as a group and then we'll find a way of talking to or interacting with the supervisor so that we fix the issue, right? Um, I, I cannot overemphasize the fact that you want to make sure that uh, you have regular interactions. Bookmark this. The milestones are there. Um, 
I've, 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 marked, I've marked these things up front, but we'll have ad hoc interactions. When we have an ad hoc interaction, unless if we change the slot, it will always be either Monday seven hours or Wednesday seven hours. All right. Um, I want to leave you with this. Can I ask that uh, you, you um, elect, appoint, or select uh, two course representatives? Apathy from fourth years. Um, last year, it, they were only able to do this in the second part of the term. This is for your own good. If there's a problem, if you want to negotiate an extension to a deadline, you go through a course representative. Thank you very much. I will see you uh, the next time we have a briefing. Uh, information will be sent out via the mailing list if you have a briefing next week. Thank you.